Hello and welcome to Ukraine Today, I'm Little Suluhub. The highly anticipated and much needed privatization of Ukraine's assets has started off with the wrong foot. The public sale of one of the most lucrative pieces of state property, Odessa Port Plan, has failed. None of the potential buyers submitted their bids. Join me now to discuss the reasons for that, as well as the way out for the government, is the CEO of Concord Capital Investment Company, Mr. Ihor Mazepa. Mr. Mazepa, welcome to Ukraine Today. Uh, good afternoon, Vladimir. So, Mr. Mazepa, tell us what went wrong with the privatization of uh, Odessa Port Plant. Uh, there were several reasons uh, behind the failure of privatization. Uh, first is um, uh, pricing. Um, effectively, the government came up with a uh, enterprise uh, value of $715 million uh, mar uh, enterprise value uh, as a starting price. Uh, at Concord, we have done a number of researches on the, um, on the business potential, on the uh, operational side, on the asset side of the company, at the support side. And um, uh, we actually, there are a couple of, um, couple of ways to come up with the evaluation of this company. First is a you know, most probable DCF. Now, the company showed, um, reported uh, operational loss of 600 million grivna, uh, which is roughly uh, $20 million in net losses in 2014. And the company showed um, a positive EBITDA of $8 million in uh, 2015. Um, but if you do your basic uh, research and analysis, uh, you would probably understand that uh, uh, in 2014, the company has made around $90 million of EBITDA, um, and in 2015, uh, it's around 50. So we adjusted at Concord, we adjusted the normalized uh, 2015 EBITDA uh, as a $50 million market cap. Now, if you I imply any multiple, more or less reasonable multiple, uh, four or five or even six, uh, you come up with a market uh, price uh, of this company uh, with the enterprise value of the company of $300 million market uh, enterprise value. Now, uh, there is also $200 million debt, uh, which actually the company owes to, uh, to the supplier of the gas. So if you deduct the debt from the uh, enterprise value, you come up with a $100 million market cap. Um, this is, and the starting price should be even lower than this one. If, we, if, you, if you really want to get an interest of uh, many, many investors and to, to make sure there is real competition on the, on the, on so the basically the, the starting price was five times higher than the real market value of the company. Unfortunately, this is true. Uh, Why did it happen? Now, again, uh, there are a couple of reasons behind that. Uh, the first uh, reason is, uh, so probably most of the um, sort of uh, groups of uh, influence which actually uh, control the management and we, which actually may uh, steal the difference. Uh, we, 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 as we discussed earlier, uh, in my, well, uh, according to the research people of Concord Capital, um, we estimate that the company has made, uh, is making somewhere between 50 to 90 million uh, dollars uh, free cash flow each year. Uh, and uh, those group who are, who are interested actually, who are, well, who are beneficial owners of this cash flow, well, they are not interested to sell it. That's the reason number one. And I think this is the most important one. Uh, the second is um, uh, the process itself. Uh, there was a uh, financial advisor, uh, well-respected uh, global bank, uh, UBS. Uh, also a BRD and IMF and uh, IFC were also, you know, somehow involved in this preparation, at, at least at the consultancy level. And um, unfortunately, the State Priority Fund of Ukraine did not listen, did not take into, into account any comment and any advice of those guys, uh, those uh, well-respected IFIs. Um, uh, there was a, a so-called valuator, which by the law should be there. It's a local company, um, no-name uh, company, of course, um, which came up with a, with a ridiculous uh, price. Uh, there was no public discussion, uh, like, you know, no opinion of investment bankers of the international organizations were taken into account. And um, unfortunately, the result is like this. Um, I'm afraid the government, uh, or the prime minister and the, um, well, the newly appointed prime minister, I would say, uh, 
were not able to take this uh, sort of a political risk. Because um, here in Ukraine, everyone believes that uh, uh, the state property is worth billions or tens of billions of dollars, and uh, it's all multi-billion uh, country. Uh, it's wrong. Uh, well, the asset is worth, you know, uh, well, how much people pay for it. And, uh, but still, there is a lot of, um, as it's really politically and socially sensitive issue, I mean, the prioritization of the, the support side. So the government was under stress and under actually uh, sort of a careful watch from the public. Uh, with a pretty much unstable political situation here, Probably the sellers, um, the state priority fund, and the prime minister again, um, were afraid that they will find themselves in the in the actually um, in a con so, sort of a confrontation with the public opinion. Mr. Mosefa, can we talk a bit about the bidders? You obviously have some insight about the companies who were planning, for, who were potential uh, bidders for, for, for this Odessa port plant. Had the market, the starting price been lower, would it be possible for the, 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 the bidders uh, rose the price up to a couple hundred million dollars? Um, before we come to bidders, there are also a couple of other factors which actually were obstacles for any bidder who would, uh, who would come and, um, and uh, take a look at this company. We all know uh, this debt under question, $200 million, and it, it's been actually in the courts. So um, in my mind, the state priority, of, 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 uh, state priority fund of Ukraine should uh, come up with a sort of an agreement uh, um, with, uh, with the lenders uh, before the, the auction took, took place. So uh, that's why uh, this $200 million under question, in the opinion of the government, actually, in fact, uh, where uh, um, were believed to be real debt, so the people um, had to add this money, you know, to to, to the starting price. Um, another thing is um, this uh, litigation with the Kolomoisky Group, uh, which uh, uh, used to participate in the similar ten tender back in 2009. Uh, who proposed uh, at that time $600 million, and by the government of Timoshenko, uh, the tender was cancelled. So now Mr. Kolomoisky has uh, all the reasons to go into the court. He went to the court, there was no final ruling on this, uh, no final decision, but still there is a risk. So the government and the seller should do something about this. For, for example, come up with a guarantee or warranty. So if, if this is, uh, well, if the court ruling says, uh, well, it's, uh, you know, it's a risk, so the government would, would help to, would help to uh, compensate. So basically it's a very problematic asset. Yeah, so it's, uh, at, it's not very problematic. There are a couple of issues. They are technical, but you know, at the end of the day, they are really important to real buyers. Now, who came to um, who came to you know to this tender? The big Turkish chemical company, the huge, uh, uh, they are huge players on the on the market. They were real b bidders. Uh, the Aman uh, um, uh, company, Amani company. Uh, we noticed them actually uh, at Concord. We noticed them uh, uh, 12 months ago. They were going around um, on the market search, uh, searching for high-quality assets, uh, be it in agri uh, cultural, in agricultural uh, uh, infrastructure or the support side. I know they they are real players, and they they could be one of the uh, one of the big, uh, serious bidders. Um, Plus, uh, we, we can also indicate a couple of others, uh, uh, indicative players, uh, indicative buyers, uh, who actually did not show up uh, with a real bid uh, for the reasons which we discussed uh, earlier. Yeah. Um, the government, following this uh, failure in, um, in July, the government announced that they are planning to uh, restart the auction uh, back in, in, in fall. Um, and again, try to uh, put uh, Odessa port plant on sale. Uh, do you think they will be able to come up with a more reasonable price? And do you think that uh, if that happens, uh, they'll be more successful? Uh, two other uh, factors, like the debt settlement and the settlement, legal set settlement with Kolomoisky Group, uh, would really help uh, for the success of the process. Uh, pricing, uh, more or less fair pricing, is, uh, is a key element in, this, uh, in the future success of the sale. Do you see the government trying to resolve these two issues? Um, there are no signs yet. 
in my mind, uh, the prioritization is not the key, uh, key uh, source for the budget implementation of the budget income. Um, there is a more and more and more important sense which come with the prioritization. So, uh, for, uh, first of all, it's uh, the major source of corruption in Ukraine. The state-owned uh, companies um, has always been in the last 25 years the major source of corruption. So if you privatize uh, you know, the whole scene, um, apart from killing corruption, uh, you also uh, bring best people as management, uh, best knowledge, uh, money, uh, which would go into surrounding infrastructure. Apart from um, um, the Odessa uh, seaport, do you see any other uh, lucrative pieces of state property which uh, might be of interest to foreign investors? Odessa port side plant uh, was supposed to be the sort of uh, uh, trigger for, for, for the upcoming prioritization because we also discuss uh, uh, Old Energos, which is uh, electricity generating companies. We also uh, discuss uh, many other huge um, uh, companies uh, in, in the sectors of machine building, in agriculture machine, uh, machinery, in aerospace, in uh, railways, uh, um, uh, alcohol production, everything. Just uh, in my mind, the government should sell everything, including uh, nuclear power stations, uh, hydro stations. There is no much, um, there is a little bit of technology, but there is no much, uh, um, strategic interest in there. You just make sure the regulator is strong uh, and uh, in this way you will retain the best operated, operating companies from the US, from France, from Japan, from elsewhere. This is, this is how the whole you know, world operates. Uh, Mr. Mosefan, my final question. Um, if we take a look at the bigger picture around the privatization or the failed privatization rather and the, the fact that it did not go through is this a sign that the reforms which are being, which the Ukrainian government is trying to introduce, are not going forth? That the Ukrainian government is not uh, changing the way uh, the, the Western partners would like to see it, or and also that the business climate of Ukraine is not the right for foreign investors to come in. Um, the business climate is not the perfect uh, for the time being. Of course, it would be different if this prioritization had happened. Um, I still believe the real reason was uh, the technical uh, the mistakes which were actually uh, uh, done on the, on the way of, of prioritization and uh, this is something which can be improved and this is uh, something which can be changed and pretty quickly. And um, hopefully uh, again in October or November uh, we'll see the prioritization actually going forward uh, with the same company at the support side plant. Well, we'll be definitely following these developments really closely. Mr. Mazepa, many thanks for finding the time to come and talk to us. Thank you very much. We were discussing the unsuccessful start of privatization in Ukraine with CEO of Concord Capital Investment Company, Mr. Igor Mazepa. I'm Vladimir Solohub. Thank you for watching Ukraine Today.